we'll talk today about vertical circles. Tomorrow we'll talk about horizontal circles. It's kind of funny. Horizontal circles are less complicated in that there's usually fewer forces in your free body diagram. But the diagrams the kids told me are a bit trickier. So this is where I said to you, I'm doing tougher questions now, but the kids have told me that makes it easier. By vertical circles, well, the most common ones we're going to be talking about are amusement park rides, the Ferris wheel and roller coaster loops. So let's start out with Ferris wheels. A person rides on a Ferris wheel. Oh, I got to tell you a Ferris wheel story, but I got to stop the video. Ferris wheel. They sit on a Newton scale. Oh, what does a scale measure? Okay, so it's going to measure the normal force. At the bottom of the Ferris wheel, what does the scale read? Normal force equals mg. Normal force is bigger than mg. Or normal force is less than mg. You know what? We're going to vote. How high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. You wanted some more challenges, so we'll throw some more in. So at the bottom of the Ferris wheel, if you were to look at the scale that you were sitting on, what would it read? Who says, Mr. Duick, easy. Scales measure the normal force. The answer is A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, 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 no. Scales got going to measure more than the normal force. B. I got one. I got two. I got three. I got four. I got five. I got six. I got seven. I got eight. Owen, is that a vote? Don't do that then. Less than. I got one. I'm not going to answer your question. You know what this is a good job for? Free body diagram. At the bottom of the Ferris wheel, what are the forces acting on this person? Get the obvious one. Everybody draw it in. Good old MG. Mud, what path is this person tracing out? I'm looking for that starts letter C. What path is this person <laughs> tracing? <laughs> what? What path is this person tracing out? Say it again. Where must the bigger unbalanced force be pointing? Toward the? What force is pointing towards the center? Has to be larger. Because they're accelerating towards the center. And that's which way the winning direction is. By the way, that's why you feel heavier at the bottom of a roller of a Ferris wheel. You do. Now, it's not as obvious because a Ferris wheel is a pretty tame ride, but you do feel heavier at the bottom. So, oh, replace the Ferris wheel with a swing set. That's why you feel heavier at the very, very bottom of the swing when you're going really, really fast. Okay? Normal force has to be bigger to push you in a circle. Oh, that's a great question. On a Ferris wheel, people feel light at the top and heavy at the bottom. Why does this happen? Well, we've already done heavy at the bottom. We've proved that, just with a good free body diagram. What about at the top? This is a job for a... What are the forces acting on this person at the top? Get the obvious one. Okay. What path are they tracing out? Where must the bigger, larger force be pointing? Toward the? So there's still a normal force, but I know the normal force must be smaller than mg. They feel lighter. There it is. They must feel, because remember, I've taught you, Paige, what you think of as your weight is actually the normal force, the ground pushing up through you. So that's why I've told you last year, all a good amusement park ride does is mucks around with the normal force. That's what you feel of. That's why we call the normal force your parent weight. Okay? The big differences between roller coasters and Ferris wheels is this. At the bottom, the free body diagram is the same, but at the top, on a Ferris wheel, your head is pointing up. On a roller coaster, your head is pointing down at the top of the loop. So on a Ferris wheel, at the top, the normal force is pointing. But at the top of a roller coaster, the normal force is pointing. That's the big difference. Okay? Okay. Here's your new word. In Latin, the word centripetal means toward the center. We call this a centripetal force when you're moving in a circle. If you call it circular force, Kevin, I'm fine with that. I'll get it. And in fact, when I write FC, I think 
centripetal is what the C stands for. But Garrett, if you just pretend circular is what the C stands for, you'll be okay. But I'm a physics nerd. I have to use the correct terminology. When an object is moving in circular motion, it has centripetal acceleration. By Newton's first law, there also has to be an unbalanced force, so it has a centripetal net force. Winner minus loser equals FC. In fact, this is going to be our new equation. Winner minus loser equals FC. Where the winner is toward the center, loser is away from the center, that's going to be our reference frame. Oh, and FC is MAC. Oh, and there's two versions of A, Taryn, V squared over R, or 4 pi squared R over T squared. Which one will you use? Depends what they give you or ask for. Let's try some with some numbers here. So I wrote here, in our winner minus loser approach, the centripetal force will always be the net force. In the same way F net never actually showed up on your free body diagram, FC will never actually show up on our free body diagram. FC is the vector sum of those. FC is the vector sum of those. So do not, do not, do not ever put FC on your free body diagram. It doesn't show up there. It shows up in the equation. Uh, in the previous example, a Ferris wheel is a rigid wheel. And what that means is your speed is the same everywhere. Uh, compare that with a pendulum. What's a pendulum? A mass on the end of a rope like this. If I spin this vertically, sorry for those of you at YouTube, but those of you in my class watch, if you watch close, it slows down at the top and speeds up at the bottom. So we can analyze this, but we can only analyze this one when it's right here at the top and when it's right here at the bottom. This is the only time that we can deal with non-uniform circular motion where the acceleration is actually changing. If it's a rigid circle, Ferris wheel and roller coaster, or well, Ferris wheel, not roller coaster, Ferris wheel, then the speed will be the same everywhere. So. Example three says, write force equations for the vertical pendulum at the top and at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to do at the bottom first, right here. I'll do part A on the left. Zach, what are the forces acting on this at the bottom? Get the obvious one. Good. Mud, what path is this object tracing out? So where must the bigger unbalanced force be pointing? Toward the? What force is this? Your hint is, Zach, it's a rope. So what do we call the force from a rope? What's the equation at the bottom, Zach? Who's winning? Who's losing? What's that going to equal? MAC where AC can either be V squared over R or 4 pi squared R over T squared. What about Danica at the top? I'll do that right here. What are the forces at the top? Get the obvious one. What else? Is it sitting on a surface? What else? No normal force. The rope. Which way? Also that way. Who's winning? It's a trick question. Well, there's no loser. Because which way is the winning force pointing toward the... Are they both pointing toward... So at the top, you have this. Tension plus mg equals mac. Where, again, A can be V squared over R or 4 pi squared R over T squared, depending on whether they give you V or the period. By the way, just for giggles, Danica, get the T by itself. Okay. 
Zach, just for giggles, get the tea by itself. Where is a rope more likely to break, at the top or at the bottom, and convince me? Yeah. Why? You're adding gravity as opposed to subtracting gravity. You're going to get a way bigger answer at the bottom. Yeah, a rope is far more likely to break at the bottom of its swing than at the top of its swing. Absolutely. Kind of a Captain Obvious, maybe, but th there's the physics of why. Okay. So in a vertical circle, there can be tangent forces that cause the object to speed up like in a roller coaster loop, which we'll look at, or with a pendulum hanging on the end of a string. And the net force, when you go winner minus loser, it's going to be mv squared over r, or m4 pi squared r over t squared. Mr. Duick. On my formula sheet, it just says 4 pi squared r over t squared. Why did you put an m in front of it? Because your formula sheet is just giving you acceleration. f equals what what? m. Hey, don't forget the m. Common mistake. Common mistake. Kids forget the m because especially this one looks so complicated, they think it's a force. It's an acceleration. m a. Hopefully your physics teacher has taught you that. I like example 4. I like example 4. I like example 4. Example 4 is the next question. And also, I just like it. Let's go ride on a roller coaster. A 70 kilogram passenger is moving at 10 meters per second at the top of an upside down roller coaster. Find the force the seat exerts on the person. What force is this question really asking me to find? Normal force. Okay. You know, this is a good job for. And mud, what path are we tracing out? Let's remember that. Okay. Well, what are the forces acting on this person? Get the obvious one. What else? Normal force. Which way? Downwards and inwards, unlike a Ferris wheel. So if you're wondering, the normal force will always point in the same direction as the person's head is pointing if they're on an amusement park ride. Their head's pointing down. Normal force is also down. Head's pointing up. Normal force will be up. Danica, who's winning? Yes! My equation is going to be normal force plus mg equals mac. All right. Which version of a am I going to use? Did this question give me or ask for v or t? It gave me the period in seconds. I, I disagree. What did they give me? That tells me I'm going to use that one. First of all, let's get the normal force by itself. How? Okay. So the normal force is going to be M. Which version of A am I going to use here? How do I know? Give me a V. If they had said it takes six seconds to go around the loop, then I would, oh, that's a period, and I would use the 4 pi squared r over t squared. So m v squared over r, and then I guess minus mg? Do the m's cancel? Okay. This is actually kind of important. This is why you may find as you get older, you age out of rides because as you get heavier, as you get older, your normal force gets bigger and bigger and you may suddenly find a ride that you rode when you were a svelte teenager and really, really enjoyed. Suddenly you try riding it as an adult, you're feeling a little nauseous. The normal force is a little too big for you to deal with. So far I'm lucky. I haven't aged out of any rides yet, but I haven't been to Playland in about three years, so we'll find out. Now, this is why little kids can really go on rides like crazy. Okay. Uh, let's plug the numbers in. So the normal force is going to be, what was M? 70. V, 10. Don't forget the squared. Over 8 minus 70 times 9.8.
What do you got? I better get a positive answer. If I get a negative answer, I've messed up my free body diagram or made a typo in my calculator. 189? Units? Do they feel heavier or lighter? What's their normal normal? What's all of your normal normals? MG. So if I just quickly calculate MG, way lighter you would feel like you were about to fly out of your seat. You're not. There's still enough force keeping you in there, but you would feel like, because you feel so much lighter, that you were about to fly out of your seat. You'd be screaming in a good, ah, good ride way. Okay. In fact, I could even take that 189 if I divide it by 9.8. Instead of having a mass of 70 kilograms, they feel like their mass is 19.3 kilograms. They feel way lighter. In the previous example, what would happen to the scale reading if the roller coaster moved A, slower, B, faster? Well, let's do A first. You know what I think? I think the key equation is right there. As you move slower, which of those variables is going to change? Okay, as this number gets smaller, what happens to this answer? And so you'll feel lighter, right? Slower it goes, the lighter you're going to feel. In fact, there's probably just, did I ask that as a follow-up? Maybe I did. There's probably just the right speed where you feel weightless. Okay? So... I think I would say for my answer, well, Fn equals mv squared over r minus mg dot dot dot. As v decreases, Fn decreases. What if we go around the loop faster? In fact, you could probably go so fast that you would feel heavier than your normal normal. There's probably a speed where instead of 189 newtons, it's 19.3 kilograms. Oh, you feel like you weigh 90 kilograms. You feel like you're really getting pressed into the top. So again, Fn equals mv squared over r minus mg dot 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 as v increases. And the fact that there's a squared on there, it probably manifests itself over a small change as a big result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> example six. If the pendulum of example three or the upside-down roller coaster of example five were moving at minimum safe speed, what would that imply about the forces? And then B says, find an expression for the minimum safe speed. Owen, you got to make it because that blink is getting longer and longer. Okay? Okay. Let's... I'm, I'll come back to the tension one, but we just did the roller coaster. We said... The normal force was equal to mv squared over r minus mg. Right? What's the minimum safe speed? The lightest you can feel is when the normal force equals zero. That's when you feel weightless. Any slower than that? And the coaster will actually come off the track and crash down, unless it's held on by grips. So, you know what? Let's look at this expression right here. If the normal force is zero, I guess your slowest safe speed is 
mg equals mv squared over r. Oh! Is the slowest safe speed the same for little kids and grown-ups? Why? Okay. Get the V by itself. And we end up with the slowest safe speed is the square root of GER. And you're going to giggle a little bit, but actually that's going to become one of your old familiar friends. If you're dealing with a vertical circle and you're finding a speed and you end up with the square root of GER, you've done it right. Even There sometimes might be a coefficient in front or a number in there if I give you different parameters and different conditions. But if you're doing a vertical circle and they ask you to find a speed and you get some expression with the square root of GER in it, probably get it right. What about that pendulum? Well, I want you to watch close. Sorry for those of you watching on YouTube, but look up, everybody. I'm going to go slower and slower and slower, and I want you to watch the rope when I hit minimum safe speed. You see that the rope's getting slack at the top? So at minimum safe speed, on a roller coaster, normal force was zero. At minimum safe speed for a pendulum, which force is zero? Tension. And he's slower, and you saw it start to drop. Imagine if that was a roller coaster, and it started to bad things, right? So again, I'm going to start with this equation, and I'm going to say at minimum safe speed, tension is zero. And so we end up with mg equals mv squared. Hey! Hey! Our old friend. That's the slowest a roller coaster can go through a loop and make it through the loop. Otherwise, it's either going to fall. Now, in real life, it wouldn't fall because they're clamped to the track. It would go partway through the loop, and then it would just slide back down and, and come to a stop. Example seven. If we spin a bucket of water fast enough, you can invert the water. How many of you have tried that when you were a little kid, taking a pail of water or sand and just doing this? Yes? Okay, follow up. How many of you then tried pushing the envelope? How slow can I go? How slow can I go? Until you got maybe splashed or wet on a hot summer day. Any of you? Okay, it's good science there. Try it on a hot summer day if you want to. What is the minimum safe speed? So it says this. If we spin a bucket of water fast enough, we can momentarily invert the bucket and not have any water fall out. Why? This is a job for a... Let's draw a free body diagram right here. Oh, they gave me a picture. I'll label the picture. Okay. What are the forces acting on the bucket of water? Get the obvious one. What else? The water, much like a roller coaster seat, is... Sorry, the water. The bucket much like a roller coaster seat, is applying a normal force. Danica, who's winning? Sorry, hang on. Mud, what path are we tracing out? Okay. And this is, by the way, I'm not making fun of you. This is a key question. This is the question you always need to ask yourself now because the rules for circular motion and free body diagrams are a little different from what I've drummed into your brain in Physics 11 and earlier this year. So what path are we tracing out? Which way is the winning direction? Toward the? Who's winning? They both are. We get this. Mg plus Fn equals m, and I'll go v squared over r, because I think I'm going to be talking about how fast, not how long it takes to go around. MAC. Okay. What's the minimum safe speed when the normal force equals what? And I get the square root of? So I'm going to get the, let's see, how do I want to do this? I guess I would say this. I'm going to get the normal force by itself. As long as there is a normal force, we stay dry. So, 
as long as mv squared over r is bigger than mg. We stay dry. As long at, sorry, as long as. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's irre it doesn't matter. I'll show you what I mean. Ready? If I go uh, 6 times 8 divided by 4, 6 times 8 is 48 divided by 4 is 12. 6 times 8 is 48 divided by 4 is 12. Doesn't matter. Okay? So I usually have a habit of doing that because I typically will do a complete fraction. You can argue, well, Mr. Duick, it's v squared over r is what you substituted. Yeah, but I think that's clearer, and that's what I'm thinking the whole time when I'm looking for stuff to cancel or doing the math in my head or whatever. It's a good question. By the way, if I bothered getting the v by itself, I would get as long as v is bigger than the square root of ger, we stay dry. I encourage you this summer on a hot day to try the experiment yourself. It's a win-win because if you go too slow, you get a little water on you on a hot day. That's kind of a win anyways. So if you're at a beach somewhere, try it. I don't have a pail anymore. Just go to your little niece or nephew or cousin, push them out of the way and take their pail. Come on. Ooh. Yes. Ah, but if the radius gets twice as big, the velocity only has to get root 2 as big. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Yeah. Good question. I like example 8. I like example 8. Example 8 is a nice question. Let's take a car over a ramp. A car is traveling at 28 meters per second on a hill of radius, a circular hill, of radius 120 meters. When the car is at the top of the hill, what upward force does the seat exert on the student? What's this question really asking me to find? This is a job for a... Based on what are the forces acting on this car? Get the obvious one. I agree. What else? Which way? Which way is the head pointing? So which way is the normal force? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? How do I know? What path are we tracing out? Where must the bigger, larger force be pointing? Tw bigger, smaller, or the same size? I'll exaggerate it so it's obvious. Who's winning? Darn right. Who's the loser? What's that going to equal? It's going to equal MAC, which one? Oh, they gave me a speed, so I'm going to use V squared over R. Mr. Duick, when will they give us the period? Honestly, more often for horizontal circles in tomorrow's lesson. But okay. um, What do they want me to find? Floppy dance, right? There's a minus sign in front of the normal force. So, and we'll get this. The normal force is equal to mg minus mv squared over r. Does the m cancel here? No, no, your no, m does not cancel when we're finding a normal force. In fact, again, a heavier person would feel this much more than a lighter person. Mason, what's the mass? G minus 72, V 28, don't forget the squared, and the radius was 120. What do you get? Two hundred thirty-five point two, 
And again, just for giggles, I'll divide by 9.8. Uh, instead of having a mass of 72 kilograms, they feel like they have a mass of 24 kilograms. They're feeling much lighter. This is the stomach feeling that you get every once in a while when you go over a little hill like that. You know what I'm talking about, right? Okay. What if we went faster? How fast would we need to travel for the student to feel weightless? If you're feeling weightless, which of these is zero? So we'll start out with Mason's equation. mg minus fn equals mv squared over r. But what did you say if we feel weightless? How big is the normal force exactly as a number? Okay. So we'll get mg equals mv squared over r. Will everyone in this car feel weightless, even if they're a child or a grown-up? They will. And what does it want me to find? Let's get the v by it. Oh, hello, darkness, my old friend. Uh, 9.8 times 120 that's a typo <sighs> 34.3 meters per second Okay, what if we went faster than that? What if we go 40 meters per second? Car gets air. It'll leave the ground. Has to be, because now you've actually got an unbalanced force in the vertical direction. And you're no longer traveling in a circle, so we're okay. We don't have to have the winning force pointing down as soon as you leave the ground. Example nine. Raj has a mass of 72 kilograms. He's riding a Ferris wheel. Oh, I like example nine. I like example nine. He's riding a Ferris wheel of radius 12 meters, moving with a constant speed. Ferris wheels move at a constant speed because they're rigid. Roller coasters don't. You hit your maximum speed at the bottom of the loop. You slow down, you slow down, you slow down. You're slowest at the top, and then you speed up, speed up, speed up. So for roller coasters, we can only analyze it at the top and the bottom. At the top of the Ferris wheel, the bench that he is sitting on applies a normal force of 450 newtons. Ooh. How fast is the Ferris wheel moving? Okay. Darman, any suggestions on how I might want to start out? I think I'd do a free body diagram. Darman, what are the forces acting on Raj? Get the obvious one. Which way? Um, last, I think it was last year, and I cannot remember the grade 12, and I should. On the test, I had a grade 12 student do this. And I did not let him forget it ever, ever. Don't be that person. He, he owned it. It's, oh, I can't believe, I don't know what I was, I don't know. So, gravity. Darman, what else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as MG? Why? What path are we tracing out? Where must the bigger winning force be pointing? Toward the... Start to see it? Okay. What's my equation? Equals. And since they want me to find speed, V squared over the RR. If they had said, how long will it take the Ferris wheel to go around once? Then I would use the 4 pi squared R over T squared and I get the T by itself. 
What are we going to get by itself here? Okay, folks, this is around where my love for rewriting equations ends. I could divide by m times, e divide everything by m, multiply everything by r, and then square root. I'm not. I'm going to turn this into one number. I'm going to crunch this. I'm just going to go 72 times 9.8 minus 450 equals mv squared over r. I'm going to go 72 times 9.8 minus 450. I get 255.6 equals mv squared over r. And now I'll get the v by itself, times by r, divide by m, square root. Two hundred and fifty five point six times by R twelve divide by M seventy two square root. As much as I like to rewrite stuff, sometimes it's just more work to do it that way. Rewriting things to get things by itself should save you time, not make it tougher or add more time. Times by twelve divide by seventy two square root. 6.53 meters per second. George, what's B want me to find? No, Owen, who's waking up now. Owen, what's B want me to find? Where? Oh, you know what this is a good job for? What are the forces at the bottom, Owen? Get the obvious one. What else? Bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? What path are we tracing out? Where must the winning bigger force be pointing? Toward the? So normal force bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? Good. And I guess it's going to be winner minus loser equals mv squared over r. Oh, oh, and how would I get the normal force by itself? Okay. Notice to do part B, we had to find V first. I would have, after today, no problem not asking part A, Karen just asking you part B and expecting you to clue in. Ah, I got enough information that if I go to the top, I can find the speed and then use the same speed at the bottom of the question. I would have no problem doing that now. That would be a good seven mark written kind of a question. Uh, meanwhile, it's going to be 72. I'm going to write 6.53, but you know I'm using my answer button. Divided by 12 plus 72 times 9.8. 72 times answer button squared divided by 12 plus 72 times 9.8. Double check for typos. This might work out nice. Yeah, 961.2, 961. And that's a force Newtons. Uh, let's see. Divide by 9.8. Yeah, they feel heavier at the bottom because their normal norm, their normal mass is 72 and they feel like they have a mass of 98 kilograms. How many of you at least once in your life when no one was around were on a swing and you decided to see if it was possible to do a full go over and loop? How many of you tried that at least once? Do you all suck or is it possible? Can a child ever on a swing ever swing fast enough to completely loop over the swing bar? Like any good physics puzzle, the correct answer is it depends. With a chain swing or a rope swing with flexible lines, you cannot. But with rigid lines, 
like poles. You can put your pencil down, look up. Nope. So this is a swing with rigid poles, it's called a Russian swing. Is this person's height increasing? Where's the energy coming from? Got to be coming from somewhere. Okay. Coming from the swinger. This is a workout. Coming from the sugar. That, watch, you can see how the swinger is. The same way on a swing as a kid, you learn to shift your legs, shift your weight, pull when you need to push, when you need to. You, you all figure that out when you're about five or six. There's a method here as well, but it's going to tire you out. He's added a lot of energy. This is a workout. Hey. 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 Also, I hope those boots are strapped in because I'm not seeing much of a safety. I'm pretty sure those boots are strapped in. I hope. That's a pretty good workout, I think. So, can a child ever swing not with slack rope swings or chains? No, can't be done. Mythbusters looked at this as well. They eventually ended up strapping a big rocket engine to a dummy, and that got it to do a full 360 chain swing. But with under human power, without assistance, no. But again, with the rigid arms, yeah, they went to a circus performer who got it going right away very, very quickly. Okay, follow-up question. I've seen at skate parks that sometimes they have a half pipe, but sometimes they have a full pipe. And I've seen skateboarders do a complete loop. I've even seen bikers do a complete loop. Could a human being running run a complete loop? Put your pencils down, look up. Don't try this at home. Sorry, it's a soda ad. Drink Pepsi Max. My name is Dan Walters. And I'm a stuntman who does tumbling, gymnastics, and pop up. I'm attempting to run the loop. I've seen people doing a skateboard before, I've seen people doing a BMX before, but no one's ever tried it on their feet, so it's been nice to be the first guy to actually run it. It looked a lot bigger than what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it must have been not the easiest thing I've ever done. To be one of the first people to do things is, is always one of my ambitions. You know, I want to try and push the bounds even further and further and see how far people can go. They 
basically boils down to the centripetal force. You need to keep on accelerating. Hey, that looks very familiar. So you need to reach a certain speed. And I've worked that out. It's quite good news, actually. The speed at the top is 8.65 miles per hour. That's it. Okay. Three, two, one, go. 17. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one did. I know I've said that three times now. This one did. The real challenge, because he's got the speed to do it, the real challenge is when you're part way up the loop, you really, you have, because you, you want to lean forward. All your instinct says lean forward when you hit a hill. He's going to have to throw his head and weight back and get his legs to torque all the way around. That's a lot of instinctive overcoming because your body does not want you to do that, to throw yourself backwards in a blind trust fall while your feet are moving. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm close. close. Right. You can see he gets okay, farther than his legs just naturally want to go into a flip for safety. Not really going further until... you got to overcome that. Yeah. You take the match out. Let's go. Let's go for it. And again, the key is going to be throw his weight back part way up that loop. You can see every instinct wants to lean forward, not back. Don't try that at home or at a skateboard park or something like that. But yeah, trained professional can. Yeah. Huh? I don't know. Oh, Hot Wheels, please. I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll analyze the we'll, we'll analyze the full size one, my friend. Patience. Yeah, we'll get there. What's your homework? Number one is good. Number two is good. Uh, there is no number three. Four is good. Five is good. Six is good. Seven is good. I'm going to skip eight. You can also skip number nine and number ten and number eleven. See, I'm too nice. 12 is good, 13 is good, ooh, roller coasters, I like number 14, ooh, more roller coasters, I like number 15. You got about 15 minutes to work on the homework, my friends.